Parevne, this is Fatil Tutunjan coming to you from the Megerian Cultural Center. Today I'm here with the Birthright Armenia volunteers again, um, joining their forum, and we will be learning about Armenian rugs and carpets and the whole, the entire industry. And I've never been here before, so I'm so excited. Okay, let's start. Welcome to the Megarian Carpet Cultural Complex. My name is Galina, I'm gonna be your tour guide. Our company was established in 1917 by the grandfather of today's owners in New York City. Back then, Grandfather Megarian was involved with washing, buying, selling, and repairing antique rugs. During the time, he opened companies in different countries, such as Egypt, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Romania, China, and so on. And then only in the 2000s, he came to Armenia, bought this company building, and invested his company also here in Armenia. This is where all of our weavers weave the rugs. They weave by using the Armenian double knot technique, which I will show you right now. Hands. This is the technique that they are using. It is very strong. It does not come off. You can pull it. It will not come off, even from one string. They weave by following these maps right here. If you take a look around on each loom, everyone has their own map. The map contains the design and the measurements. On the map, you can see tiny little squares. Each square is one Armenian double knot technique. One square meter of a rug, which is about this much, takes from 30 to 40 days to weave, and it has more than 160,000 Armenian double knots. Um, if you come closer to this Over here we have the largest loom in our factory. It is used for weaving up to 100 square meter of rugs. It is a 10 by 10 rug. On this loom we weave um, rugs and donate to presidential palaces, embassies, um, churches, or anywhere that there is where it's, a, where it's a large space and we can put a 10 by 10 rug. Um, this kind of a rug takes from one and a half to two and a half years to make and we would have from four to eight women working on that kind of a rug at the same time, at the same pace. So after weaving the rugs, we would bring the rugs here to wash, brush, and shear. First we would wash, then hang it to dry under the sun for a few days, and then we would brush with the help of this brush right here, and shear with the help of the shearing machine. Here you will see the brushing process. When we brush, we get this kind of extra wool out, which is dust that sets during the weaving. We do this process so it doesn't come out later in your homes. This gives people allergies. And 90% of rug weaving companies don't do this brushing process, um, which if you have a rug at your house and you see these kind of stuff coming out, you know for sure that this process hasn't been done. Now you will see the shearing process.
wrong. It takes one month for this process to be finished. Now let's enter our Museum of Antique Rugs. are more than 100 years old. The museum is named after Hovannes and Noemi Megarius, who are the parents and grandparents of today's owners of the company. The first rug I would like to tell you about is called Vahan, which means shield rug. Here's the pattern of the shield in the middle. This rug story comes from the Armenian genocide. So during the genocide, a mother had a thought to split this rug into two pieces gave it to each of her daughters and told them, if you lose each other, then maybe with the help of the two parts of the rug, you can find each other again someday. 50 years later, the sisters found each other with the help of the two parts of the rug in New York City. The rug is 160 years old. This next rug I would like to tell you about is called the almond rug. Here are the shapes of almonds. The almond symbolizes maternity and fertility, and inside the almond you can see a growing flower, which is the meaning of life. The almond kind of has a shape of a pregnant woman. In the olden times, when Armenian women couldn't have children, they had a belief that if they wove a rug just like this one, then they would become a mother. These kinds of rugs were also used as wedding gifts and um, ornaments. The rug is 200 years old. Over here we have the oldest rug in our museum. It is called Vaspuragan. It was found in the Vaspuragan region. Um, it is also known as a flower rug. It is 400 years old. It was woven with only natural colors, but 70 years ago during the Soviet Union times, people decided to repair a part of it using on only chemical colors. You can see that this bottom part, this side, and this little bit at the top, it has been repaired using chemical colors. And 70 years later, all of the chemical colors faded, and this part still stayed with all of its natural 400-year-old colors. Over here, we have the map of Armenia before 1914, before the First World War and the genocide. This map was found in the Russian Historical Archives. And also on this map, you can see uh, all of these different kinds of Armenian rugs and where Armenians were first It is 2,500 years old. It was found in Siberia in an iceberg. It has been proven by many scientists that the rug is Armenian, and even one German scientist wrote a book about the rug proving it is Armenian. Um, I will tell you the three main facts which prove that the rug is Armenian. The first one, it was woven with the Armenian double knot technique. The second, the color red. They get from this insect, a Vortank Armin. Uh, in our English, it would be cochineal. It is only found in the Aeroradium Valley. And the third main fact about the rug are all of the symbols on the rug. The symbols come from the walls of Urartu Kingdom, which was the first Armenian kingdom. And now the rug is located in the Hermitage Museum. <laughs> you can t uh, see the German scientist's picture right here. He was in our company two years ago. Or three. He died two years ago. <laughs> Here we have the picture of the company owners. This is the man who established the company in 1917, Harutun Megarian, with his two brothers, Toros and Mukertich. Um, their brother Mukertich was actually murdered during the genocide. Here we have the parents and grandparents of today's owners of the company. We have the ancestors of the Megarian family in 1909, and the third, fourth, and fifth generation of the Megarian family. And if you 
come closer over here, I will show you all of the natural dyes that we have and that we use today for weaving the rugs. Color. This yellow color we get from the immortal flower. Um, it is also used for tea. This coffee kind of color we get from the rind of a pomegranate. The red color we get from the root of a matter, which also during Easter time people use to dye their Easter egg spread. And the only ingredient imported from a different country is indigo, which is from India, which we get the color blue from. All of the rest of the ingredients we can, you can find here in Armenia. Um, and over here, I will show you two of our four fixators. I can only show you two because the other two are our secrets. The first one is alum, it's a mineral. And the second one is a wine stone. It is leftover wine that becomes stone from over the years in the bottom of the barrel. So this is what we use to fix the color to the wool. By mixing all of these colors together, we get more than 600 different shades. that you see here they are all for sale except for this one right here this design is called glory and this design in this size we are only going to make 100 copies of it and we are giving it to the people who have done something either for the recognition of the armenian genocide or for the armenian nation in general this one for example is going to go to george and amal Clooney. and over here in the pictures you can see some of the people that we have already given to here we have charles Naznawur. Helik Mkhitaryan, Serge Tankyan. Over there, we have Garo Pailan. He is an Armenian in the Turkish parliament, Pope Francis, and Aram I, the Catholic host. What do you guys think so far? I know Mikey and I haven't said much because we're just speechless. Like I knew making Armenian rugs and carpets is a whole entire process, but like just seeing the details and the timeline of everything and the amount of details that goes into it is just it makes it takes it to a whole another level. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like it um, so it helps the YouTube algorithm and more people get to see it and get to be more aware of the process of making Armenian carpets and rugs. So yes, please like it. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do. That really helps me as well. Hi, I'm Asya from Germany. I came to Birthright because I watched your videos actually. <laughs> um, and also because I want to contribute to this society and to this country, which is beautiful. So you need to come over. Nice. And yeah, go ahead. Hi, I'm Talia. I'm from Montreal and Ottawa, Canada. Um, I came to Birthright because I'd been wanting to do the program for years and years, and I'm here just to learn more about the country and have a great time. How long are you guys staying? For two and a half months. Right now until December, but we'll see if I can extend. Nice. And how do you, how, thoughts about the carpet making process? Do you have any idea? beautiful I had no idea about the knotting process it's really cool so, yeah you really have you really gain such an appreci appreciation for all the people involved in making just one carpet so it's uh, it's, it's an incredible process and thank you for supporting that where I see <laughs> thank you so much you guys hopefully more people will come
definitely. I hope you guys can hear me over the very loud excitement that I'm hearing from the volunteers talking about the carpets. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you get to visit uh, the Megarian Cultural Center and the watch this entire process in person and get to see all the amazing rugs and carpets. Thank you so much again. Do you want to say bye with me? Sure. Okay, let's do it. We're going to say bye together. Bye. bye.